I heard that described one time. CB unit. See, one of these CBers went by, and he's he's talking to some other female CBer, and they're just chatting back and forth, and he's getting closer to her, you know, getting to her. I guess he's he from the conversation, he's got a an embroidered shirt on with a tiger on the front. And this gal had seen it when they stopped at a restaurant. She said, I sure like that tiger on your front. And he says, yes, my wife made that for me. And she says, that's me. And then they came in sight of this place. And uh, he just flipped out. He said, uh, I think he must have thought some high-powered architect did it or something. He said, the architect that designed that ought to be in a padded cell. In a madhouse. It's a nightmare. <laughs> I don't think she shared it with him because she didn't, uh, she didn't come back to him on that bit of his conversation at all. Yeah, she did. She said, what is it? But that was all. Well, it was the spiritual aspect of this mountain. Did you want to ask your question first? Yeah, how, how come did you get to this place? Well, it was the spiritual aspect of this mountain which brought me up here, oh, say, 18 years ago, first time. And I went over all of Thunder Mountain and that limestone reef. I spent about a week on it. And it was eight years later before I moved up. Well, of course, there's the first, the mundane thing, shelter. Shelter from the elements, and this is really important. And we learned that quick here, if we didn't know it before, because we landed up there in May, which was May, but still we had a blizzard. And, uh, you know, and I was right out in the prairie, so we had shelter. So then, this is shelter from the elements, and then you need shelter from possibly all of the other things that can occur out. Life and I think this uh, our home should be a complete total universe, as each individual is a complete total universe, never to be repeated. And so should the house. It should be just about complete, self-sustaining. Are you like your house? <clears throat> I never equated it that way, but probably, you know. That's the wind room, the top room, because Father Wind sings beautifully up there when he blows through all those bottles and around them. Makes a noise? Across them. Now it's a subdued humming. Of course, it can get pretty loud, but it's never raucous or disturbing. The second uh, floor is the library, and that's primarily all bottles, too. but not as many bottles as there are on that top floor. Do you see this as like a sculpture? Mm-hmm. A, a temple? Temple. It's a monument to the West's earliest peoples. That's one of it. Another thing I've called it is a sculpture of today's man because it has all the junk items that make up the spirit and character of man today. But it also has gemstones which make up the character of the qualities of all man. If you want to, you can find them, and that was the essence of part of this, too, is to hopefully find the good qualities, the gem-like qualities in man, and point out those and, and uh, point away from the other. And that's why we're trying to feature our gem-like rocks here. Pretty comfortable to live in? Oh, yeah. It's getting more so all the time. Of course, the first two or three years, we lived on a dirt floor in there. And, uh, since the first line of rocks was pretty thin and full of air holes, why, the first winter, it looked like all of the rocks inside were white. But what it was was about two inches of frost. But now, it's, it never gets, if we didn't build a fire in there, I don't think it would ever freeze in there. It's designed to keep the outside out and the inside in. Because that's, that's a mammoth amount of material there. The amount of material that's gone into that is just astronomical, because you can't even see it. Like this little staircase going up the outside, 17 sacks of cement. Not counting the steel and rocks. 
or the mortar, the sand. Got a little one inside called the Little People Staircase. I think it took 13 socks for that. And that's not counting all the others. We just hauled in truckload after truckload, and it just vanishes, and, uh, and it doesn't seem to change it much. <laughs> But I've added three times the weight of the Statue of Liberty to it in the last two and a half years. It's not finished yet? No. It's about 10%. Can you build another one? Yeah, I'd like to build a good one next time. Most of those rim, those circles up there, are the armatures are about 1918 tire rims. And the top armature is a wagon tire. This is a airplane strut off of an airplane that crashed on the east side of Thunder Mountain about 1972. And in this little flying buttress here are some wagon axles that form the armature and the structural steel that came out of immigrant trains that went through here in the 1860s. The armature in this was actually once part of a steel camper, or pipe camper just this portal here. The roof on that's about 18 to two feet thick in the monument. And I have a tree growing up on the first deck, peach tree, full blossom now. Yeah, this old car we brought in here, I think I brought it in about five, six, seven, eight years ago, I don't know. But anyways, possible parts for our old uh, Jimmy over there. But when it come time to put this rock fence up and didn't have any way to move it because somebody had removed the wheels and the brake drums, why, we just decided to incorporate it in the fence. And uh, it'll give the kids a nice enclosed playhouse, and children like to play in cars anyway, and this is one that can't get hurt. And then we'll sculpt up another stanchion up here and tie on to this so the doors can't be open from this side. And as time goes on, why, the car will get more. It's 26 years old now. That's there another 50, we've got a real antique. But a lot of this was to show what you can do with the material just being thrown away and not used. And then this little room here was designed to show you the ultimate and keeping the outside out, inside in. It's an underground house, and it's the cheapest kind of construction. And it'll last forever. Do you consider yourself a, uh, an artist or an architect? No. Priest? No, I don't consider myself any of those things. Just a bit of the creator, <laughs> which everybody has. Got to create. Actually, what I've done here is no different than what man's done since the beginning of the time, especially in more primitive times. You took. From whatever, wherever you were, you took the material you found there and, and built your shelter with it. You didn't go 200 miles away to get it. You built it with what you had, and it's always been my contention that the Great Spirit gives you whatever you need, no matter what it is, right where you are. But you've got to be observant enough and quick enough to recognize it and be able to use it. He's always given us everything we need here, and sometimes we've missed it. And don't recognize it quick enough, and he'll take it away. But it'll come again. And I think this is true of everything we might need in our whole lives, wherever we are. I and mean, then also, if I could do it here, one older man kind of broke up, right? and with no finance, no funding. <laughs> uh, well, if I could do it here in this location, where you got the extremes of weather, too, uh, all sorts of things against it. Why, then anyone else, anywhere they are, could do it too. Not this, but whatever they wanted to do. Prove the impossible dream. It's possible to all people. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
One other reason I think that I built here and it leaves the uh, concept of the norm is that uh, maybe more than it would have been otherwise is that it was a kind of a trap. Uh, hoping, the, hoping to catch some of these disenchanted, disillusioned, unhappy people that were heading west during the 60s and uh, keep them out of trouble. And I think it did, because there was a few anyway who stopped here because it was, apparently, it seemed to be a nonconformist effort. And they frankly stated to me they were on their way to California to kill cops. And uh, those that stated that, why, well, every one of them, I was successful in turning them around. A couple of them, I got jobs here on local ranches, and some went back to school instead of going to California and shoot cops. Because that wouldn't be fruitful for them or the cop either. <laughs> Even our word uh, described as such, our word sculptures out in front, actually. If you ever looked at a bleeding man or inside of a man's head or something, while well, you're seeing what would be called very weird sculptures or inside of them. Just uh, that little patch right there has got more things that the human mind today doesn't encompass in their thinking, more designs and lines and what have you, than, than that total thing out in front has. And they'd be just as weird if they were magnified to that size. They'd be just as weird to people look at, and yet they're looking at it and holding it all the time. Those sculptures out in front, while they're done with this scrap iron, scrap metal and wired together with everything from Western Union wire up to bed springs. Got, got the bed springs in some of them that the deputy sheriff used for 20 years here. Uh, we got a lot of history. Uh, they, they're indicative and they're to, they're predictive and uh, prophetic and also of today, they're the li tenuous lifelines of nations and people and the completed circles of the round when all philosophies and all people can get together. And uh, they're the tenuous lifelines of nations and peoples. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, because people are all different colors. And, uh, the happy, nonchalant little people on these tenuous lifelines and nations and people have fired a bow into the heart of the great spirit. They fought an arrow. Then they've grievously wounded him, but they haven't killed him by any means. But he has great bows that he can fire. If he does, though, it will be from the heart, and not through venom or vengeance. And also the top is the outer reaches of space, uh, which he is interested in. And also, the whole thing is like a giant carry basket, like a giant baby basket, where the Great Spirit can reach down and pick it up. That's the handle, the arch. And then when I put the final ring on, that will be the stay ring, like the old uh, carry basket had, that you could strap around your head. And then on top of that will be the big eagle. That was the last name laid on me spiritually. I was the big eagle. Great Spirit's last admonishment to me and that was, you are the big eagle and the big eagle shall return to his nest and take his siblings with him. But he didn't say when. <laughs> well, I wouldn't teach any subject at all. Uh, other than uh, you teach, you got to work. Uh, the thing I want to teach is nothing is for free, and uh, you got to pay for everything you get. This would be to the young. Uh, society doesn't owe the individual anything, but the individual owes society a considerable. And. Uh, Leave the world in a better way than you found it. And stay one with the power. You're not trying to, like, get away from society by coming no, out here? No, no. No, I'm not trying to get away from society. 
because we're all an integral part of society. We are the society. And the nicest thing I've found, the most comfortable thing I like about this place here is that uh, the boy says this is his big birthday cake, and he's the luckiest kid in the world because he's the only kid that gets to live on a birthday cake. And the rest of them feel about the same way. They like their home. <laughs> if nobody else liked it, why, that's still sufficient. <laughs> I asked him one day what he thought of the monument, and he says, that's my big birthday cake. <laughs> and it does look like one, particularly when the snow is laid in, and as it does in this country, you know, horizontal instead of falling down, and it's all on the sides, and the whole place is just plastered with snow, maybe four inches thick all up and down the vertical sides. It does look like a big cake, it could, a big frosted cake. What happened to a lot of American Indian uh, especially in Oklahoma and other places where you had to immediately take a white man's name before you could be registered in school. A Christian name, they called it, but it started out, how's it go? And I can't talk it, I might be able to sing a little bit of it. Now you thought that I knew nothing when you brought me here to school. Just another empty Indian, just America's first fool. But now I can tell you stories that are burnt and dried and old. And in the shadow of their telling walks the thunder, pound and bold. But there are drums beyond the mountain. Anyhow, when I sing that, I can hear the old drums up there beyond the mountain. And uh, I guess that's the drum beat we walk to.